All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the April 29th uh, Select Tri Board meeting, the Select Board, School Committee, and Finance Committee. Um, the Finance Committee met Monday night with a budget that was recommended by the Select Board and the School Committee, I believe. Are you? Our part of it. You're part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Finance Committee actually did some magic. <laughs> and so to keep us in suspense, we did some magic. Uh, Howard's this, Howard's getting himself organized. <laughs> yep. We balanced the budget. Excellent. Um, we're, well, actually, we're two two thousand nine hundred eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars in the red. But We've used no free cash to get to that point. Wow. So we're, we're there. That's impressive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we just have, couldn't take it, the remaining $2,918? We were good until David <laughs> came in at 3 o'clock today and revised down the amount of money that we're getting from water and sewer. Uh, so. Oh, so it's David's fault? No, no, oh. it's just the numbers The numbers keep changing. So we've got to a point where we're holding these numbers and any changes. May I make oh, copies? I've got more copies of it. Sorry. So just to put this in perspective, I mean, when we're down to this kind of a number, that's it's, a rounding error. It's a rabia yeah. on the recaptures. So everyone has a copy, should have a copy yeah, of the... Anybody missing it? Howard, if you have an extra, I'll take one for the... Uh, Absolutely. And once an extra wash gets it, it would be so fancy. So, the, so the, the question for all of us, is if we're comfortable with this and we want to proceed next Thursday night with this the town meeting. So what did, after finalization of it all, what did not get addressed? Is there anything that there is, didn't? There is nothing for steps, there's nothing for coal in there, but there was nothing in... On the town side. On the town side. That's but there was nothing that was in the individual budgets that you had gone through. So we kept that line with the idea that we will address that in the, in the fall. So then again, this still has the TV, half TV being funded out of half TV revenues. No, all of the TV is being funded out of, out of uh, their kids uh, charge, charge, charge. Charge. their revenue, their yeah. their little revenue stream. Right? Correct. Which they came in and requested Monday night that we we not do that. That we weren't able to do that. <coughs> right. Okay. Oh, there's an account sitting there. And they're on the um, select board agenda tonight as well. So then, and so that's this is where we are. Right. And it isn't a question that TV5 isn't being funded. funded. Correct. It's just it's kind of this year they're being funded strictly out of that charter account. Which is more than enough money to fund. Yes. yes As yeah. is. As yes. is. So I think just to, to Joyce's point, um, in terms of all of the budgets that were submitted, and there was specific instruction given to the departments, but um, you know, I think we're going to want to make it clear to the extent that there were departments who requested more than what is in here that we're, we're clear on what's not included. There, if you take a look at the uh, summary sheet that we mm -hmm. tried to, that, that we yep. gave you copies of, yep. mm -hmm. the um, FY16 request, mm -hmm. we've tried to go back and see what the department actually requested. Mm -hmm. There have been a number of departments that have said, no, we didn't request that, or what we requested have been, has been cut. But we've been dealing with 
that reduce line since January. So um, there may be departments that need additional funding, but nothing to the extent that uh, we can't address it in the, in the fall. Mm -hmm. Most of the concerns dealt with uh, colas and steps. And when I relayed the information that that would be addressed in the fall, uh, some took it better than others. Mm -hmm. so. And there, um, I believe there were, well, at least one department, I think potentially two, who had requested additional hours. Yeah, and we, that's not it. We did not change any hours. Right. No. Nor were any positions cut. No. In fact, what we did is we found a couple of departments that had uh, existing staff but in the number that was presented that we were dealing with uh, under payroll, uh, somehow they were reduced by anywhere from 500 to, I think one was $1,177. And we managed to go back and put that back in the budget so that you won't see it. Anybody who's employed now will be at least level through the, through the fall. So was our was our uh, select board was our do you want to help support this or stay with the budget we recommended earlier? I'm more than happy to make a motion to accept the revised budget as presented tonight by the finance committee with the changes outlined by the finance committee. I'm gonna second that. Okay, so a little discussion before you vote is um, we, we do need to, we will have a talk with the police department a little later on. My a little later on. And you'll also see that there's uh, tonight a request from FIRE for a reserve fund transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, we've tried to address a couple of maintenance items that were cut from their budget that we can do via that route rather than the, the budgetary route. So those two things we still have to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so. so is the 159000 deleted from the police budget, was that the overtime account, or where did that come from? No, no the, which, which, which the, the, are you looking between at? the requests. The administrative, add, add or delete the 159 that was after the, the. Yeah, go back to the very, very original budget of Damien. That's what that was. Oh, okay. That's so that the, was his extra office, extra two officers yeah. and yeah, a, an extra overtime account. So as the acting chief, that's the 23399 for dispatch was the same thing, which is original budget proposal. So that's way back, way, 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 way back in okay. January when there was snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just for the record, Chief, you are um, accepting of, <laughs> I'm not going to say you're happy with, but you're accepting of the uh, police budget that the finance committee has presented here today. Yes, yeah. In, in certainly can, can explain more. I don't know if this is the time for that, but we, know, we have plans for the future, and um, <coughs> Howard and the finance committee, I believe, read my proposal and um, seem to have faith in something like that moving forward. This, this request that I put in was simply because we just don't have time to resubmit an entire budget for the new plan. Okay. Yes. Schools have any comments? Yep. Okay. All right. So, all right. We have a motion and a second for the select board to amend the budget we proposed to this budget. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so that's what we'll go forward with. All right, so other tri-board issues we want to talk about? There's a consent agenda that uh, this would be the second year that we um, that we would try the consent agenda which, by which we would 
uh, address up front five articles. These are the standard articles that are year in and year out. Uh, uh, Select and Divine, you were moderator, Divine, uh, when we first introduced this. Absolutely, I, and I through the moderators association meetings that I went to in order to get five things off the counter initially and quickly, five things that we do every single year that we actually have to do. I mean, it's, it's just st standard cookie cutter. Um, there's five things that are on there now. I wish they could fall as number one through five through the original thing rather than pulling out from different areas. But I understand some are CPA articles. Mm -hmm. And the other one has to do with the funding for the $10,000 for, uh, for the water system. But there are things like borrowing that we need to do. There's spending of the monies. There's spending of those things. And, and instead of wasting time on town meeting floor, let's get everybody to raise their hand. As long as nobody objects to it, let's get those five, six things off the counter and, and get a consent order approved. So in order to present this to the voters, uh, consent means that the Finance Committee and the Select Board must consent to these five articles being presented as, as uh, agreed upon. Uh, I know that you've taken votes that you've endorsed all the articles, but it's probably helpful if we just touched on them uh, briefly and then take a formal vote between the two boards. The, the first three are the standard uh, housekeeping articles that appear on each and every warrant. The first one is to, um, to accept uh, uh, grant money. Uh, so the second one is to... Um, appropriate Chapter 90 money, and the third one is to authorize the treasurer to borrow in case of uh, cash shortfalls. These are three articles that appear on every single warrant. There's never any debate. Uh, and then the next one would be Article uh, 10, which is the $10,000 reserve that we set aside for the Water Plant Filtration Stabilization Fund. We have a water treatment plant that has 57 filtration members. Um, as all of our water passes through these things. These streams have a life expectancy of 10 years, and uh, it costs about $1,000 per screen to, be, to replace them. We've been setting aside $10,000 in a special account each and every year in order to get to a, the amount of uh, $100,000 in order to replace these screens when they reach the end of our, their use life. And this would be, the, I believe, the seventh contribution to that. So that's, that money comes out of water reserves and would be placed into the Special Stabilization Fund in order to help with that. And then finally is the Article 20, which is the CPA administrative. By law, we have to set aside a certain portion of our CPA money for certain purposes, as well as to designate $5,000 for uh, administrative costs of running the CPA department. It's for legal uh, opinions, it's for postage, it's for raw mileage reimbursement. Never any debate. So those are the five articles. I have a question. Sure. Um, if, if we have fixed 56 membranes and it's $1,000 to replace them, that's $56,000. This is our seventh installment of $10,000. That's $70,000. Do we need to make it $10,000? We, uh, we uh, had that discussion when we hit the, uh, the, 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 the brass ring on this uh, about the year five of the, uh, the funding. And it was uh, felt by the Select Board and the Finance Committee at that time and the Capital Planning Committee that we hadn't adjusted for inflation. There's the ancillary costs that always go along with a project like that, and that we should go for a figure of 100000 Okay. Uh, How in the future? I make a motion that we adopt the five articles as the consent agenda for town meeting. Second. All right. Is there a motion of the Finance Committee? Oh, I'll sorry. make a motion that uh, we approve the five articles to set forth in the consent agenda. I second. All right. All Select board. Aye. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 So we're in agreement. Uh, just so you know, our neighbors next door actually did use their consent calendar last Monday night and it worked for them. So we'll have to keep up. 
think we're ahead of them. Feel free. <laughs> yes, tonight's night two of their town meeting. Yes. <laughs> My jacket and tie are Going tonight too? Yeah, I'm going to get Okay, <laughs> so actually, um, for Tribor, then the only other thing for us to talk about is, is next meetings and next steps after town meeting is really where we are. So there's a couple, uh, there's actually, and, and the treasurer study. We have a subcommittee that's looking into the treasurer position and possible changes there. Um, so there's going to be a, no, there's going to be only, we don't know what the treasurer is going to do about that, but there's no change in, among the finance committee members, right? That's to, Not, to yeah. that subcommittee. No. And there's no change for a select board. Um, and there's no change to the school committee. Okay, so we'll start, now we have a new treasurer. We'll get that going now and start getting some times and, and looking for times to actually meet and do this. Day, evening, what are you thinking? I don't know, what do you think? There's um, two of us here. Day time during the week is not good for me. Okay, is it afternoon after work or is it evening is better? Um, I generally work until five. I mean, on occasion I might have to get out earlier if you needed to, but as a rule, I'm working until five. Okay, when do you start? Uh, technically 8.30. <laughs> we, we have this wild subcommittee that actually meets at 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, well. We just bring a lot of coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very, the first, first 15 minutes is a lot of warming up. Um, go ahead, you want to finish? No, okay. you had a question? Uh, well, I was just uh, more of a thought. Um, what I would <clears throat> like to propose is I would like to um, put together a proposed calendar um, while everything is still fresh on our mind um, about the strategic planning budget process for the, the upcoming year. Um, the specific kind of, just again, just a proposal um, to be vetted by everybody uh, about how we might change how we go about this process for next year. So if people are okay with me just taking the first pass at that, I mean, obviously it won't be done in the vacuum um, of other people as well, but then I'd like to bring that to whether it's first the select board for review and then to the tri-board or to the next tri-board meeting or whatever. Um, I'll okay. do that sooner rather than later if everybody's okay with that. I, um, I think I'd be great. Right. I, I know Mr. Koski had some concerns and issues at the last meeting regarding how the system went through. Do you have any recommendations for us here tonight or any specifics that you were thinking about that would be helpful for everybody along the way? Yeah, we asked the, well, uh, it, it was asked of the department heads to enter um, all the data in beta, uh, and then it was never used after that. Um, it was re-entered on the summary sheets uh, we went back and found some minor discrepancies uh, in, in that. But there seems to be, well, at least in my viewpoint from listening to the department heads, there seems to be uh, a fair amount of concern that they, they spent all this time and nobody listened to that, uh, that, that need. And I think that, that really has to be addressed. She uh, already uh, yeah, I mean, uh, unquestionably, one of the one of the very next steps, um, I believe, is we need to have department heads in here at the front end of the process. That's where we want to put our quality control and focus on um, before any budget instructions are given. I think we need to do a lot more listening and have a lot more conversation with the department heads about against strategic planning, you know, short-term issues, mid-term issues, long-term issues. Uh, so that when we're actually working on the numbers and the budget process, we're putting it in the context of, of a full and complete picture of where we're heading in town. And in the absence of doing that, I'm concerned that we will continue to um, run into the same issues. So that, that would certainly be one of the, the first things, and I think, Howard, because you and I have talked, that dovetails with 
yeah. how, how they're then engaged in the budget process. And the other thing that I heard from a lot of them is that doing this once a year, you know, it just seems to be not helpful to a lot of them. It would be helpful if there's a, a mid-year review or something that, you know, that we could tell where their budget is and where they wanted to go and just so it isn't a one-time, one hit and, you know, we'll see you next year. Uh, they shouldn't feel like there's no other way to solve financial problems during the course of the year. Okay. And there are some budgets that that's all it does take. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, we have to agree upon that. And oh, there, absolutely. There are this some isn't every, that are, every single that are one. fluid, as the senior center is, or the library, or right. you know, of that nature. But you do have those that are just set, and there's no change. The the treasurer's office, the clerk's office, um, you know, of that nature. The treasurer's office. Yeah. I mean, those are all, and the assessor's office. That's pretty well cut and dried for what they what they need, what their needs are. Um, but as the senior center people came in, they're having issues with busing and uh, having extra people on and getting people to their appointments and having an extra person in the office and you know of that nature. So those things have been brought to us, but there's certainly not anything that can be met right now. And that's, that was determined at this point. So, I mean, um, it all depends on what our pot of gold is. Uh, at any you know time and as we learn through this process that budget is so fluid it just doesn't just stay put in one spot all the time you know, a lot of them were just not financial things or there were ways to team what one department has and somebody else you know to combine and share a piece of equipment or mm -hmm. you know a, a position or you know there were ways to, to to handle that without actually reaching into the to the reserves and paying something, you know, yeah. they just wanted to have that that heard. I heard that over and over from. And the it heads. reminds me, I actually have a, and this is a, a question of what one can and cannot do um, relative to the. And I don't know if we have an answer tonight, but relative to the chart of accounts, something we talked about earlier in the budget process was the idea of taking certain line items and actually bringing them all together. Specifically, we're looking at building maintenance. Yes. Um, that's not how this budget is laid out that we're about to bring to town meeting. So a question I have, is there any way to affect that change in the chart of accounts after town meeting votes these line items, or would we have to, I think, because it's just can, a because they're, they're under expenses. Form, right? You know, yeah. we're breaking out salaries and expenses. Those are the two. So anything that's in a group of expenses, you can change whatever, because you're looking at the bottom line for that expense. Right, even if it's department to department, right? So, okay. Um, it might be easy, it might be that we, it'd be best to set it up for the next, for 17. Well, <coughs> and, I, I and do that think there's an issue. concerns me. Well, and, well, I think there's another way to skin the cat by maybe just, yeah, just well, through so reporting. Like yes. Just through reporting with the subcodes, we can certainly look at them in that way. Like. You know, we can look at all the oil and fuel bills and stuff too, but from an accountability standpoint, um, who's responsible for overseeing the expenditures within those line items if we wanted to change how we manage that? But truly, in, in the accounts we have it set up now, the, the department head's responsible. It doesn't matter that we have a building, uh, building guy who does the work. That department head's still responsible for his budget and getting one repair done and spending the money and then coming and get more money if you need it. So leaving it with the department head is something to think about as well. Even though we want to make an account for all the buildings, the department heads with their little, they need to be responsible for that too. So but I think that's something. what we're talking about, best practices rel relative to, should it be under the purview of the department head or should we have somebody really overseeing all of the building maintenance line items? So then we're talking about changing and making yeah. another tier. Go ahead. I was just wondering if, if how the boards felt to whether or not this should be something that's done uh, individually by department or should we bring everybody together in the same room and sit and talk about these things. We were talking about the sharing of assets between the departments mm -hmm. uh, earlier. Um, is this a case by case thing or should we bring everybody in? It's, I'm just trying to get a feel for it. It seems to be on a case by case basis. Um, Whenever you get people together, it helps to, to brainstorm and see if there is a way to, to uh, get the task done better, faster, cheaper. Okay. 
So the way we kind of set our schedule up last time is our next tri board is in June. Because May is May's next town week. meeting. Um, so do we want to leave it as the June June third is our tri board meeting? Six o'clock. Are you going to be have a proposed calendar by then? Well, I was just going to say, I think um, if the next tri board is going to be June, I would I'll likely bring it uh, a draft proposal to the select board, and have that way we can have a conversation about it before it goes to tri board. Is that agreeable? Then? What our end of our end meeting, the twentieth. Have a meeting of the, board on the, the 20th would be the time for us to talk about it. And if we have the tri board on the third, mm -hmm. is that okay with you? May 20th, right? Yeah. And then we're gonna we want to stay with the uh, first first Wednesday of the month as the tri board at six o'clock. No one's throwing anything at me, so I guess that's good. Um, no, I don't, no. well, will you and I be? Do you know when senior night is? Uh, isn't it usually the week of graduation? No, that is the week of graduation. Graduation is June 5th. Oh, it's not Thursday, Friday? It's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I just don't know. Do we have sons graduating? We do. Yeah. They sometimes change senior night because of sports stuff. I know. So there's some possibility Molly and I won't be here. We might have to move it to the 10th. Okay. I'm okay with that. Okay, so, so that's. So, do we want to just move it to the tenth? I think now? we should. Yeah. Is that after graduation? Yes. Yeah. So, so that's okay. going to be tri So then the third is kind of open right now as a to be determined whether we have a select board meeting or not. What, on the tenth? The third. third. Um, tri board will be on the tenth. We should probably. Hold on. I know. On the third, tentatively, we'd schedule you to be with the SDOT to talk about the Route 9 widening project. Again? Yeah, so that we can. Did you get the message the last time? Okay. So this would be a coordinating meeting rather than a paper processing meeting. Okay. So. Okay. Do we want to do it? Well, because I got planning down here. We had some planning there. Yeah, we were going to do the planning on the 10th. Mm -hmm. That's all right. We can do it. Yeah, if we do the tribe board from 6 to 7, mm -hmm. and then from 7 to whatever, is our plan. we'll do our planning. That actually will work out really well if we're talking about the calendar. Yes. Firstly, it was at the stage four. Yeah, we may just keep just, yeah, the so We don't want to schedule anything <laughs> any for the June tenth meetings. We don't want to schedule anything but a tribe board six to seven, and then planning for the select board for the rest of the select board meeting. No liquor licenses. No. Last minute thing. thing. <laughs> no. So the question for May thirteenth, I'll have you down for a bunch of things as well as a retreat. I think we're going to move the retreat to that. That's okay. planning. Okay. So are we still doing the 13th regular meeting? I still have a regular meeting. Yes. Right? I won't be there, so. On the 13th? On the 13th, so. Joyce, you won't be there. We'll go wild that night. We can. We'll be out of here in 45 minutes. <laughs> 10 seconds. Done. Perfect. We have to go to a classroom thing. Are you okay? Excellent. I feel like I never get this on the game. I'm not facing this way. Okay, so. <coughs> so, this May 6th, we thought about having a meeting. That's the day before town meeting. We have one thing we need to do before the 14th. So we could do that on our meeting before town meeting on the 7th. We can. 
if that's if there are no open issues on the board. I should say, maybe we should make that decision at the end of the evening. I thought we were meeting at 6 p.m. anyway, not at 7. We are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we could not have a, a meeting on the. Six, six, and just do all our business on the seven. So what we have tentatively for you for the six, and again, this is tentative. Um, we have a joint meeting with the library trustees in order to appoint somebody to fill a vacancy. Um, we have um, the Valley One Vodka wants to come in and talk about an event that they're going to be having, and then we have a liquor license uh, on top of the campus that change. So we can accomplish all of that in half an hour on the seventh, if you wish. Absolutely. I'm just worried if we're cutting it too close, depending on we haven't gone through the warrant and everything. If do we want to make that decision now, we're holding to the end of the warrant tonight. That's what I'm saying. If we want to wait until. Let's, well, yeah, we can wait and finalize it. But I think it's cool. that's that's my preference. I mean, it's I'm, I'm fine. Not to, but it's just. What's the third one other than library trustees in V1? Uh, the top of the campus. That'll be five minutes. Um, Can we do that today? Are there questions? Any concerns on the agenda? That's fine. So, all right. So, tri board, we're all set. We're done for the night? I think we're done for the night. Thank you. And it's no strike work until we're talking June now. Yes, and, and Molly is going to bring some stuff to us on the 20th, and we'll, we'll send it out to everybody before the meeting. Thanks, Molly. I'm just going to give everybody a heads up, too, that you're all invited to march in the Memorial Day Parade. <laughs> that was so much fun last night. Actually, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's all the way to the show. Join us or those that put a lot of time in. Should join us. Yeah. It's the 24th. It's the 24th. So I can get my two members to, sure. to sign and they can be on their way. Is there anything else before we go into our agenda? Okay, so. Thank you, Tri Board. Thank you. Good night, school committee. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay, so. It's actually on the agenda. Public well, safety. It's, it's buried into the public safety part of the discussion. Okay. Oh, okay. Bridget, I think you have the. Uh, uh, right here. For that way, so, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, who wants to start with the discussion of this? It's your transfer. Yes, having spoken with the finance committee, I was um, I was asked to put together this reserve fund transfer and. I uh, hopefully got this letter. Yes. So I explained it for you uh, line by line. Uh, as a result of our aging equipment this past year, we've had uh, a higher than normal amount of uh, maintenance uh, required. And last year, I requested funding for new tires for our 2006 Seagraves pumper and also uh, to repair the uh, cable that goes through the entire ladder up to the, the tip of the ladder that provides scene lighting and also our communications from where the folks uh, actually work on the ladder. Um, the cable is all cracked and exposed wiring and uh, the communications part has already failed and we're close to having the lights fail as well. So um, because of the excessive numbers that we got back on the two trucks that we did have inspected, uh, I still have not been able to get Engine 3 down there. We're going to try and push it to the end of this budget. Uh, however, this first part would be for fixing uh, that ladder cable and also the tires. And the last portion is to purchase five new air packs. They're approximately $1,100 a piece. That uh, line was taken out for capital last year, so there's only 100 in the account. Um, we have between 15 and 17 bottles going out before the end of the year, and we've been trying to stagger them. Uh, so we desperately need those five bottles in this year so that we're not trying to find money to fund another 20 bottles. Unfortunately, there were a few, a few times when we, we did get grant money. It's not unfortunate, but unfortunately when they expire, they all expire at once. Um, 
so that's that's what we're trying to to keep up with. So that is the the total amount, and I did put the estimate that we got for the tires. It did increase uh, since our original budget from last year. Uh, however, the uh, the price for the ladder cable was a little bit lower, so it came out to be about a twenty-two dollar difference as to what we originally thought. Of. So your total request is for. Fourteen thousand six twenty-two. That's correct. I'll make a motion to accept the transfer of fourteen thousand six twenty-two from the um, reserve fund. Second. Any more discussion? Finances. So we went through and approved this. Discussed this on Monday night. It was one of those things that was had been in the budget for years. Last year we were pulling various things out to put them into capital, and. It just fell through the cracks. So. I do have a question. question. Um, after uh, Chief Spanknable had left the meeting on Monday night, there was some pondering going on uh, just as to how many tires a fire truck actually has. Well, the one that we're replacing has, <laughs> has six. Uh, however, two were replaced last year, so we're replacing four. Oh, so, so there's six total on the fire truck. On that one, yes. Our ladder truck has eight, has more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Was there another one? No, that was the only reserve fund transfer. Okay. But oh, while well, well, while you're here and we're into the public safety, do you want to um, have Chief Mason speak to his concerns now? So, too? do we want to jump out of the out of town meeting stuff and talk about this or finish up public safety? Finish well, public safety? Yes. Yeah, sure. well, unless they want to stay for the moment. All right. We'll finish it up with looks like Mike's had a pretty rough day, and I'm sure Mike has to. Mike and <laughs> Mike Square. Yeah, and then I'm like, come on. No, seriously, can we give me a second to get organized here? I, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure that's the right word as, as far as concerns. I just want um, one of the, I guess, first, I might owe an apology um, because I'm still trying to learn you know, the nuances of timelines and when things need to be submitted as well as to the finance committee and everything. Um, so I just want this board and the committee to understand that you know I'm dedicated to finding a solution for this overtime problem as well as um, increasing the quality of service for the town of Hatton. Um, they're working diligently to try to come up with a plan that will do both of those things and I believe I'm on the right track. As I said, I presented some of the information to the Finance Committee the other day. From what I understand, it was a fairly positive response. Obviously, there's more work to do. Some fine-tuning needs to be done. Uh, but unfortunately, there just isn't enough time. There's too many moving parts uh, to the plan. Uh, it's going to require some concessions and some cooperation with the police union before we can even roll it out. So. Basically what I was left with, and, and rightfully so, the, the Finance Committee explained that we just didn't have enough time to do it um, for this budget cycle. So what I did was is I had a backup plan in place, which is the request that was accepted tonight, in the hopes that we can move towards adopting some of those items that are, that are in that future plan, like uh, creating another supervisory position on the police side, creating a dispatch supervisor position on the dispatch side just to bring a little bit more structure uh, to our department. So uh, I understand that a lot of work went into putting that budget proposal together and submitting it to the Finance Committee, so I do apologize if the request amount that I made um, was uh, out of order. I, what I did was is I took Damien's submitted proposals, which totaled the dispatch and police included almost 200000 and I pared it down to about forty-one, forty-two. So that's why you have the number that you have before you. I don't want to take up too much of the board's time 
explaining the new plan because, as was explained to me, this probably isn't the right time for it. So. But given the fact that we're talking about moving into um, a, a new schedule for strategic planning, I mean, this is exactly, and I would imagine that everybody right. would agree, it's probably one of the first conversations we're going to want to have. So right. um, it will be very soon, right, that we would entertain what Mike has to. I think, uh, yes, actually. We may have a little sooner because we do have to do negotiations. We have to. There is no time before time. Yes, there is no time. Yeah. So maybe even the twenty. Uh, we might have to do it less sooner than. Well, we, yes, the twenty might be the time to do it. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Just well, you know, I can email you my preliminary proposal, which essentially is a, a layout of the logic behind the plan. There's obviously more numbers that need to be gone through. I, I didn't, I intentionally didn't calculate certain things into it because I was trying to keep it as simple as possible, working under the assumption that there probably wasn't going to be enough time to put this into place now. So I just wanted to put some things on paper so that the board and the finance committee were able to look at it and see the logic behind it so that we can kind of move forward with that and then work the numbers in afterwards. The, the negotiation team would probably need to think about meeting before the 20th just so we have things in our brain before we actually, we're not really sure when we're going to start negotiations with the police. They actually count votes on the 5th, right? That's right. They count the votes on the 5th and then there's a seven day uh, appeal period. So we would have to wait until the 12th at the very minimum before we could start negotiating. One of the things that I am working on now is actually putting together some contract language um, to kind of encompass this entire plan so that it's a little bit simpler to, to slide across the table to the union, explaining what we're trying to do as the town side and what we need the union to do to make this work. That's what I'm working on right now. Who's the negotiating team again? You too. Yeah. We got it. She <laughs> keeps hitting me though. Every time. <laughs> it's my job. Okay, so is there anything else from public safety? I'd actually like to revive a topic. Let's do it, please. Okay. Unless the gentleman have anything. Do you have anything else? I just, I guess I missed the approval of the budget. I just didn't hear. You had told me the 1177 was that? Yeah. That was it. But minus the 200,000 we took out. <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering. I some of it wasn't added back in, so that's what I was just wondering where we were. <coughs> we, we, we approved it as they said. So it was just the, that one salary, though, that was added back in. That's correct. So, OK. So do you ask if you want to? Well, no, I just, um, that I understand that we can't, we don't have any additional funding. It's just that I wasn't prepared that I understand that you we had to add that back in because that's what the office manager was supposed to be paid this year mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I just I just hope that um, next year we can try and I asked Molly and the Finance Committee about a quad board meeting rather than a tri board so that we can get the information a little sooner because I think that there was some information that wasn't um, I think there was information that was incorrect and I uh, I just don't know where it got changed and I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of it Mm -hmm. um, because I gave you real numbers, and I'm just afraid that next year I'm going to be sitting here asking for another reserve fund transfer. The, the part that you missed is where um, we're going to potentially um, make changes to how we approach strategic planning in the budget for next year. And on the 20th of May, our board's going to be discussing what that schedule might look like. and. We mentioned that it would absolutely kick off with input from the department heads about short-term and long-term issues. Um, so you'll have, if everybody agrees to the schedule, then you'd have the opportunity right up front before the fiscal year even ends to start talking about. But we also have, as we mentioned, uh, fall town meeting also that will be coming up. There's not a year you can go by without a fall town meeting. So it would be a nice to try. I know. Get your numbers back in, Kevin. Uh, there was some talk a while ago regarding the dedication of the building to the Chief Hawkwitz. 
and I know that kind of fell a little bit by the wayside. Uh, Peg Jack had asked me to get involved with that a little bit, and I've had some conversations with, with Janet Huckowitz and kind of got some some designs for, for signs and stuff like that, things that she liked. But I understand that both of you are on a committee that was supposed to be looking at this as well. I'd like to see if I can get involved and get some of your time there and show you what is gone forward with this and you know see about getting this thing done because I'd like to get it done before too long. Uh, I went out there and I she said that there was having a little bit of problem with local sign guys kind of getting back to her and being interested in the project at all. I went out of town and, and everybody's interested so I got some stuff. I brought it to Janet and she asked me to make sure that you guys get involved as well. Okay? Thanks. Who did our sign for coming into Hadley? That was done uh, out of New Jersey. Yeah, there was a company out of New Jersey. But like even Ferguson signs? That would be kind of negative to say that he wasn't involved and want to be involved with it on public TV, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I, I think we should stay away from that. <laughs> I guess he didn't have a nice decision. <laughs> So anything else for public safety? I have another thought too. We'll discuss it later. Just an idea. Okay. All right. So public safety, we're all set. Anything else? No. All right. So let's see. So staying with uh, budget adjustment discussions, um, is there anything? Is the HPAC committee coming in? Uh, we're expecting you to take this up until the seventh. Okay. Wait. Okay. We'll, we'll be here. Um, let's, let's talk about the petition article, land acquisition compliance with procurement laws. Okay, so we've been working on the, uh, the petition article. The petition article is the petition article it's on the warrant, but there's nothing really to be said about that. The main issue here is uh, the form of the motion. Currently we do have before you a motion which uh, accomplishes one of the two necessary legal tasks that needs to be uh, uh, addressed by town meeting. The first, the first thing is if we're going to buy property, we need to have money to buy the property. That motion that he currently has addresses this um, just fine. It raises $3 million through a debt exclusion, 20-year uh, borrowing, and we um, have no problem with that. But the other part of the uh, legal procedure for uh, purchasing land is that the town meeting has to specifically mention a parcel of land. That we can't just raise three million dollars, go out shopping and buy land. Uh, town meeting has to approve the parcel as well as the funding mechanism. The, uh, we can address the parcel of land within the motion, but in so doing we need to identify Montgomery Rose as a unique acquisition and that dispenses with the procurement process. Or we can stick with the motion as it is, as a money article only, and then go through the procurement process, and then at a later date come back to a town meeting and have a vote to accept a particular parcel of land, whatever the procurement process reveals to us. So we need to somehow address this particular issue. We're only halfway there on this particular article. All right, so what's the recommendation? Did we talk to council? Or what's the recommendation we have about this? Council, council says that um, we can declare this as a uh, unique parcel if we can come up with a list of characteristics that identifies this parcel as um, fitting all of our needs and no other parcel that we're aware of uh, can fit those needs. So that would be necessary for a unique determination. So I don't see how we can do that. Why can't you? What's your list of uniqueness? We don't even have a, a list of what we want. Well, there's already buildings on the property. There's buildings on other properties. Well, not that would suit most of our needs. That building doesn't have, I mean, we still have to modify that building. I mean, I don't, I don't see how you can declare it to be a unique building and a unique property. I'm sorry, can I, I just want to make sure I heard 
the opinion correctly. So in order to have, so this is Article 15 we're talking about? Correct. Okay, so in order to have Article 15 be a valid article for town meetings vote, and this Article 15 is the one that specifically talks about the Montgomery Rose property and whether or not the town wants to appropriate $3 million for the purchase and reconstruction plan. Um, in order for this to be a valid vote, it has to be declared a unique parcel. We need to identify, it's a valid vote now to raise the money. Right. But we can't then use that money to buy the property. In order to use the money to uh, purchase that particular parcel, we have to mention that parcel in the motion. In order to do that, we need to declare the property as a unique property that can serve our needs. Okay, so, so, so uh, if people were inclined to vote yes on this, the only way to make this work is we it would have to be declared a unique parcel now. Or, or come back at a later date once you've identified which parcel it is that you would like to purchase with the money that you have in hand, come back for a second vote at town meeting at some point and say this is the parcel. not going to hold that to another town meeting. And what's unique about it, it's got 28,000 square feet building on it. It's within the, the range of the uh, municipal uh, sewer system. It has uh, 17 something acres of APR land on it. It has a cell tower that generates $25,000 a year income on it. It has its own well system on it. It has a six inch water main uh, municipal water system in it. It's got a uh, 10,000 gallon above ground uh, fuel tank on it. It's got a standby generator on it. And <clears throat> if you go around the community, there is not one piece of property that even can come close to comparing with it. And again, uh, the vote is valid, everything's valid there to the procurement. And I asked Mr. Nixon with the petition before, if this carries, everything's fine. And the answer was yes. Then he found out it wasn't so yes. There was a little glitch in it. And it just, I know, Guilford, you've been against it from day one, even with, with the committee that wanted to go out and request for information that was two, three months ago that came in front of this board and asked for that. And somehow it was not right, you didn't like it or what, but now all of a sudden it's with nothing else, the laws changed, nothing changed, but it's okay to do it now. I just think it just, you know, what did the board is afraid that the people will make a decision out there whether they want it or don't want it. You know, I mean, there was plenty of time to gather all kinds of information on this, and it just was like postponed and kicked down the road. And, you know, Mr. Chairman, you were the main guy that did that. So, Jeff, can I, can I take wait, it? Wait, no. Sure. So, no, that's okay. So, we have to figure out how to declare unique if we wish to do this. So, to declare it unique, we need to have all the information on what we plan to do there, and then match that to the building, which I don't think we have, or do we have? You go can one day here from. Wait, can I before? Um, so, what we certainly have here is a sticky wicket. Um, so we have two articles that petitioners um, attempted to get are attempting to get on to town meeting, acting in good faith, um, regardless of anybody's opinion on the outcome of said petitions. Okay, so I just want to separate opinion and, and how one might vote on this from just the, the facts we have. Um, you know, it, it seems that there was some misinterpretation, misinformation, whatever. So one thing that concerns me is I think that 
to the extent we legally can find a way to get this to town meeting. I think it's appropriate for us to do that. Um, there's no doubt in my mind, now I will go to my opinion, there's no doubt in my mind that I have insufficient information to make an, what I would consider to be an informed recommendation to town meeting on these articles. Um, but I also understand that even if it passes, whether it goes up, down, or sideways at town meeting, nothing's going to happen until an override vote would take place for the funding after the fact, which would give additional time. So I'm, I'm only asking that you know everybody try to separate what opinion they may have right now from this going to town meeting. I agree. But then again, you also, also we have an uh, opinion from our legal counsel that's only, this is only a advisory. The select board can still choose not to procure the building even with the override and the vote. Is that correct or is that changed? No, that is correct. That uh, town meeting as a legislative body gives you the authority but does not uh, order you to take an action. So then, if that's truly the case, then letting town meeting vote on it is advisory. Really, really isn't that big of a deal. Right. And then it gives us a chance afterwards to, if you know, if everyone says they want that piece of property and they think it's unique, then we have time to figure out the uniqueness of it, and then then we can have a second town meeting to finalize a short, quick second town meeting to finalize if we want to try to move this forward. Is that? But you're talking about two town meetings yeah. and a, two town meetings and a, an override vote yeah. on this? So if you do declare it unique, you don't need to have the town meeting. Second town meeting. A second, second town meeting. The second one. That's Which correct. is, I mean, that's an, it's an expense and it's a. But declaring it unique is not just saying it's unique. We have to have the reasons why, list the reasons why out. Well, I mean, I, do we have a legal definition of what unique is? What unique is in the eyes of the procurement? Yes, we do. So, and we sent out an RPI afterwards, right? Yes. You have an RFI on the streets right now. Okay. So the RFI has specified what we're looking for. Yes. Is there anything in the RFI? That makes that that outlines a unique building. The RFI talks about preferences that the select board would like to see, but the, don't and necessarily have to see in a. Uh, yeah. So, so what does the procurement law say relative to determination of a unique property? Uh, that you you have to the council will help you out with it, but you need to uh, enumerate your characteristics of what a parcel has in order to and identify it to a particular parcel. This parcel suits our needs because it has access to frontage. It doesn't have wetlands. It, it has an existing building that has access to uh, potable water. All these, all these things. You hook into the sewer system. Though. Right, and it, that would be suitable for these departmental needs. That's the big one suitable for these departmental needs. We have the study for the DPW building that um, Stantec did. So Stantec has a study and lays out the requirements of space for the DPW. We talk about a fire department, but we haven't finished up. We have a rough estimate of what a ballpark area would be. So then we'd have to have something. And then we, as a select board, have to decide that those are that's what we want as a policy. I mean, we want that to be the methodology that our fire department works from. It's the way they do it now. Do we want to continue that, or do we want to change it somehow? If we determine, there's a question. Yep. If we determine that a property is unique in the context of the procurement law, and subsequently, find another property that is less unique, however it meets the intended uh, 
uh, gets the job done for criteria that are eventually further established. I mean, are we boxing ourselves into a corner by, deter by just saying it's unique? So, I mean, I don't know any other parcel that looks like that one, but I don't know if that complies with the law. I mean, are, are we forcing our hand by calling it unique? No, you would, you would, you would determine in advance what your needs are, and then this, this uh, parcel either meets those needs or it doesn't meet those needs. If you went out and acquired this property, and then found out that there was an identical or very similar property that was available for for a similar price. There could be the pro the the, uh, the possibility of a bid protest, which would then be heard by the attorney general. That's my point. Is what's unique? I mean, is unique mean that there's no other building or no other piece of property in the town of Hadley that would suffice for the outline that we put together for the RFI? Right. And if we found another one, did we open ourselves up to a protest? Yes, so that, there is that potential. But we're still under obligation to bring this article to town meeting. Correct. Because it's a petitioned article, so it has to go to town meeting. Sure, but then we have to tell town meeting, and by the way, before you vote, it doesn't really matter because it's not going to work. They, if, may, if they may feel that it will work and want us to do that. So if they both do that, then we have to figure, I mean, then, then you're having to have a second town meeting and go right over that. I think you really need to tell people that. I mean, tell them what's unique. You're not looking at the property. When, it, when you stipulate unique, it's unique to what you, your needs are. You have to remember that it's to the needs. Mm -hmm. So our problem was, uh, you know, we certainly wish we had another few months, and that and you're right, we we got ourselves jammed up with communication on this. But if we had gone and said, okay, what departments could fit in there, we would automatically say, yeah, let's look at fire, let's look at DPW. What do they need for square footage? What do they need? Oh, they need special sized doors and stuff like that. So you look at your your needs mm -hmm. based on the use, and you say, okay, these are unique to this property because you probably won't. And it's and we all know we're all sitting here. There's probably not a single other property up there that has this huge building on it. But that's not what the procurement law says. Mm -hmm. You have to look at your use first and fit it in. So I think the the be be very upfront with the people. We're kind of like got the cart before the horse, but we can work it out if you really want it. And these are the benefits for it. How we, how else could we get a building that size at this price? So yeah, put out some reasons why it's beneficial. Some of the reasons why it isn't. But say, in order for us to go forward, this is the only way that we can conceive it's going to happen. We're going to have to have another town meeting. If that is if that is the way, the only way you guys think it's going to be able to happen, but you know, we needed our board, our committee needed some more time to do this right, um, and we are we two are split. We're all essentially a couple of us said we feel it's a it's a good sound building for the amount of money and we can see the potential use. It isn't meeting the true definition what we started out with. We said 50 to 100 years. We want buildings to last. Whereas we have all decided that we don't want to put DPW into these portable uh, um, trailers anymore. Because what have we done in the past? They've been there in those portable trailers for years and it's wrong and we have to start stepping up and doing things right but is it a good possibility uh, and uh, yeah we could probably use that for 20 plus years and it would be a very good benefit for us Mr. Crossman. 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 Um, 
this afternoon, uh, David and I had a uh, minor conversation about it, and I thought that you had said that you could go forward with the article as a strictly borrowing article, that you don't identify that property, but that people would be voting to borrow uh, the three million dollars, that that would then um, trigger, if that passed, a town meeting that you would have until early September uh, in order to have a, a override vote on it? Correct. Sir. And between that time, you could put that in the uh, request for information, examine each parcel along with other parcels, but it would require a special town meeting at that point to identify the, the parcel. Correct. So that's another th way that we can go. Tell me the timing again on that. You're talking September? So yeah, after, after for the vote after town meeting, your next select board meeting, you would then uh, schedule a debt exclusion override. Uh, uh, yes, override. You the the time frame is you've got to give the clerk 35 days notice, and you have to schedule that uh, vote no later than September 15th, which is 90 days after <coughs> notification. So more, the more than 90 days. You're given for annual town meetings. You're given more time. You can use the interval to run an RFP, uh, and then in the fall town, the fall, fall time, you can come back for a special town meeting. Once you've identified your parcel through the RFP process and use the money that you've raised in order to acquire the, the property. So for semantics, you said for another town meeting. Can we do it at the fall town meeting? You can do it at the town fall town meeting. So there wouldn't need to be another meeting. We can vote on it, override it, and then come back at the town meeting in the fall. Yes. And this will still work. Okay. So long as you have, so long as you have a willing seller. If. <coughs> you know, again, Mr. Nyhart saying things about procurement. He has no expertise whatsoever in procurement. He shouldn't be saying things to mislead people. You, Mr. Chairman, made a statement. It makes no difference what that town meeting does. You guys can do the opposite. What you're doing, by making a statement like that, the people in this town, as they did in this past election, why bother voting? For what? You guys can just do what the hell you want to do anyways. And it's, it is so wrong. I just feel like withdrawing it, and let you guys go do what you got to do, and then when you come up with a $15 million t price tag to fill the DPW up that has to be moved over there because of sewer, which you guys still don't acknowledge, they're in the aquifer recharge area where they shouldn't be. This is totally out of the recharge area. You're not taking up new agricultural land like this committee wants to buy new land built on farmland. It's all disappearing, just like they did, did our schools and our public safety on the most prime lab, ag land in, in this community. But it's okay. You know, do what you want. Just do what you want. So it doesn't matter anymore. I think the committee for the board is, is of the opinion to let it go to town meeting and see what the people say. It's a question of how it's going to town meeting. I, I am in favor of it going to town meeting, yes. But the question is, do we take out the description, right? Sure. So it sounds like there, if we wanted to go to town meeting there. How can you do that? Will the petition, you, oh, so, so, so. The petition yeah. says the, the location. So you can't do that. Can the petitioners um, I'm trying to get to the process here, John? Someone could amend it on the floor. Can it be? Can a petition? Only a petitioner. Can a petitioner can. Everybody amend it on town meeting floor? Anybody can amend the article on town meeting floor. Regardless of whether it's a petitioned article yes. or a okay. You can't so, make it so long as the amendment is within the scope of the article. Right. So one option. I just want to keep recapping this to get it straight. So one option would be to have it amended on town meeting floor, remove the description, it becomes purely a borrowing article for an intended purpose. 
it passes or it doesn't. If it passes, then it goes to an override. And then subsequent to the override, because nothing has been identified, then another town meeting would have to nail down whatever parcel we may have found at that point. So that gives us the time from now until, at the earliest, fall town meeting in Jerry's scenario. Although theoretically you can schedule another town meeting in advance of that, but that gets us from now until October, right? Okay, the other thing that we could do, which is where we started talking, right, was to go ahead and let this article go to town meeting as it stands, right, the way it's worded. And add the description into the, the money part of the motion. That could be amended on the floor. And too. that could also be amended on the floor. Yes. Okay, so then you would be specifically voting on this parcel. And the money. And the money. And then again, that would have to go to an override. Correct. And that would be legally binding. Yes. Okay. The, so only, third? the only issue to the second one is uniqueness. uniqueness. Right. Well, that, it would have to be deemed to be unique in order for that to be a legal motion. Mm -hmm. Actually, uniqueness is required regardless of any path we take, either one of those two options. We have to declare at some point that it's unique for these reasons. But if in the first scenario, if we change it just to a borrowing article and we remove the description of the property, you mm -hmm. approve the borrowing, yeah, and then we come back to the next. next but but one. we would have time at yes. that point to develop the criteria for right. uniqueness based on needs, right? Right. Right. So the the real issue here is one of opportunity cost, because if in fact this is the best thing since sliced bread, by building in a timeline here, we're potentially foregoing the opportunity to snag this parcel. The other side of that is we're also potentially being rushed into something that may or may not be in the long-term best interest of the town. Is that fairly stated? I would think so. But also keeping in mind, as I'm sure that the building committee uh, has thought of this also, we're in the process of selling that North Hadley Hall. And what's going to happen when that North Hadley Hall is gone? Are we going to hold up the sale of that and well, for another how to. long? We have to trucks out and we'll help me outside. Are we going to do that? Well, our our position is we don't sell it until we have a place for the two departments to go. I mean, where can they go right now? That's a huge issue. We have to deal with that. It's a I separate know. That's what that's. I think that's the issue on the table right now. Yes, yeah, certainly. If this was purchased, it's a great, it's a, it's a place that the uh, fire trucks can go, and possibly other uses. But that's your board's decision on where these departments go. We give recommendations. One hinges, as far as I'm concerned, one mm -hmm. hinges on the other right now. We want to get rid of that albatross up there. We don't want to have to put any more money into it. We don't want to heat it. We want to get rid of it, period. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do that now for the how long? The last five years or longer. So, I mean, you know, we need to do something more effective now instead of keep putting things off. That's been our problem for the last 10 years. We keep putting things off. We're not putting it off. We are putting yeah. it off. We're, we need wait, to, we we're waiting for the yeah. historic commission to get their historic the preservation restrictions approved. Well, you know how long that takes? And it's ready to go as yeah. soon as they do that. Lord help us. Well, it took us a long time because we did study after study after study. And, and, and everybody had to I understand have what you're saying, Joyce, <laughs> very but frustrated. we're waiting. I know you're very frustrated, and I'm very frustrated too with this whole thing. But we have to go through the process. The historic preservation restrictions have to be done in a certain way, and then they can be attached to the RFP, and then the RFP can go out. Uh, I and think then you probably won't. Nobody will want the building. And actually, there's several people who have expressed interest in the building. It depends what, what restrictions you put on it. It does. And how we develop, how we separate. But that's the, beyond our we, control. And, and that's all, that all comes out when the RFP is out. We'll see what they want. I mean, there's several people who have expressed interest. There's several people who have expressed interest that we should keep parts of that property. So we have we have it going. It's moving. It ain't moving quick enough, as other things don't. 
So it is. I, I'd, like to hear from, I'd like to hear from Mike. I took a tour of it with John and Dennis Pipchinski a while ago, looked at all the buildings, looked at all the land, looked at all the outbuildings, the greenhouses, everywhere else. John explained to me this could be used for that, this could be used for the fire, this could be used for a wash bay, this could be used for a salt storage shed. The one million dollars that's going to be set aside, I am not an engineer, Dennis Pipchinski is not an engineer. We don't know, John, if that's going to be enough to do any of it, all of it, to make it this unique parcel that the town is going to be after. I mean, it's an ideal spot. I'm not saying that it's not. But the idea of is how much money are we going to involve to make this fit, to make it a retrofit. I mentioned to John about the paving. You're looking at a tremendous amount of paving over there just to pave around the buildings because they're all gravel roads. He mentioned about the overhead doors. They're not as expensive as paving. Paving could be probably up to 150,000 bucks if you do it right. I mean, you have to get somebody else, and I told John this, besides Mike Klamoski, Dennis Pip, building committee, you have to have someone else that knows these types of buildings to look at it, an architect, to design it, to see what the costs are going to be to retrofit all of this. I mean, one million sounds like a lot of money. The town has to pay prevailing wages on everything they do nowadays and they go up every six months. Guilford, you know that too, you get the wage sheets. So I'm just saying, both sides of the coin. The, the frustrating thing is, I mean, the, all these state regulations to, to, to figure out um, how to do this process, to be able to bring this petition forward, None of us know, and we we need direction to know precisely what to do with this petition. And we and right now we came up with three scenarios. We started with one. That, to me, that's so frustrating that there's no place to go to have an expert to say, "Okay, here's the here's the petition. These are the ways that we can get it through." We here sitting, we're like ping pong balls going around trying to figure out how to work this thing. But are these the only three ways of bringing this petition forward? I mean, it's a real frustrating matter. So if, from our town council, that's the only way to make it work. Declare it unique, have it amended on town meeting floor. If you declare it unique, I can change the, uh, the motion and have it ready for next week. Okay, so there's, we declare it unique based on whatever we decide is uniqueness, subject to someone else challenging us at a later point. Unique, yeah. We let the petitioner or some, one of the petitioners amend the motion on town meeting floor. We still have to come up with uniqueness later on, mm -hmm. and we still have to have the override vote. Mm -hmm. Or we leave it the way it is now, let the people vote, and then if it passes, we have to have another town meeting after we declare and figure out uniqueness and still have an override vote. Those are the three ways that. Uh, right, the override vote can would happen uh, after. prior to the second town meeting. Right. Yeah. So those are the three ways. And that satisfies what our count, town council has told us is the way to make this petition article work. Right. And those are the only three ways that we know. Uh, we've been chewing this bone with town council for quite some time because I've been trying to trying to think of a graceful way to make this thing move forward, uh, and it comes down to this: do we do we go forward as a money article, or do we declare it unique and, and uh, do money and, and property at the same time? That's where we are, and there are different ways of skinning that. Okay. Well, then you. It's Somebody's got to get together with John and sit down and come up with some you know, agreed upon ways of saying this is these are the ways of doing it. Well, you, if he's willing to do it, the uniqueness part is falls to us and taking what the building committee has come up with and talking to the fire department and to the DPW and saying. Well, I these think are we the can we can do that if we have enough time to do it. Right. 
So then if that, if that takes time to do, then the first way is to just let town meeting vote on it, up or down, and then fill out the uniqueness. And how much time frame do we have to do that? No. But no, no. yeah, that, yeah. that scenario builds in additional time. Yes. As opposed mm -hmm. to? As long as the seller's willing to wait. <coughs> well, everything's as long as the seller's willing to wait. Um, or coming up with the uniqueness between now and the town meeting. That would shorten the potential time frame. You still have the checks and balances. You have to have the override vote. It has to pass and everything. But that would potentially shorten up the acquisition time frame, correct? Correct. So one way of doing that, if this is the way that we're going to go, which is the declaration of uniqueness, is that I would work with council and have for you the motion at your meeting prior to town meeting. So <coughs> we would take a couple of days, we would show you what we had in advance, and then you'd be meeting formally and taking the necessary votes to move that forward. So then let's just take this one piece at a time. So if we take this approach, we need a motion to declare union. At the meeting before town meeting, when you have the definition from the attorneys. Actually, we, 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 should, we should decide now if we're going to declare it unique. And then How can we it. declare it unique until we see what the criteria is and make sure it dovetails with the procurement law, and then I can look and go, oh, yeah. Unique. That looks like it's unique. So we have to make a decision that we're going to go that route so they can go do that. Or, or even just to explore that as an option. I will make a motion to explore Second. uniqueness. OK. Is there? Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, All those opposed? Aye. And I'd like that as soon as possible. Certainly. Mr. Miskowski. I can't understand why you didn't get anything in writing from town council on this. I, so, I, you, wait a minute, there was time there. I hope you don't have any ideas in your head to manipulate a petition by a petition article. I hope you don't have any ideas in your head to do that. I have no wait, wait, I have no idea to do anything to this petition. It's going to go forward, the people are going to vote. The people voted up, the board's going to decide what to do. And then that's all it's going to be. If the people say yes and the board agrees yes, that's fine. And, and that's all I. Can, that's all that's going to happen. There is no I want to know manipulation before, whatsoever of I this. I want to know before town meeting: Are you going to vote to make it unique, or do we withdraw that article? We do not know because you need to have the criteria come before the board, and that's what the board just said. They want to have it looked into to see what the unique fa factors are, and then we'll. So we're going to vote on it on the seventh before town meeting. Nobody can withdraw the article. Right. And I'm respectfully asking that we move on to the rest of our agenda items and any subsequent conversation be tabled to a hallway or a future point on this issue. That's, so that's what the motion set and everything's all okay. okay. So our next idea, our next discussion is with HPAT. Clerk of the uh, HPAT Advisory Committee. And here also is our chair, David Hoskin, and of course the station manager, Truswell. So um, we want to begin, we want you to come before you because um, we were told that, we found out that in the proposed budget, um, and we found this out through, I believe, deliberations at your last meeting, uh, or at a recent select board meeting that uh, there would be no, in the proposed budget, there would be no town tax funding for HPAT in the coming fiscal year. Um, though there are, has been for a good number of years, uh, some funding with most of the funding for the station coming from uh, the revenues that the town gets from charter as part of its past contract uh, license pass-through. Uh, I guess our, our first question would be about the uh, why this was done or what the motivation was. I'm not sure where it came from or where the decision was made. Uh, it certainly hasn't been in consultation with uh, HPAD staff or with our committee. So I don't know if, there are, if anyone has an answer for that. Uh, that first question. 
So the answer was we were trying to balance the budget and we we're looking for things that we could adjust and cut and find out other funding sources. And the town administrator recommended using that source of funding, which had not been used in the past to do this, but was available and could be used to fund this. And that's why it was chosen. Right. Now, when you say it has not been used in the past, I mean, I think it's been the case that every year most of the expenses for the station have been paid out of the charter grant funds. Uh, there's always 16000 that comes out of general taxation. Certainly. Um, uh, so a couple of additional points we wanted to make. So we looked at the numbers, and it is certainly the case that with the money, given the money that was received from Charter uh, last year, in 2014, uh, to be used for the FY15, um, the expectation is that the amount of money that will come this year, unless Charter suffered much lower revenues than, than in 2014 than they did in 2013, that there will be sufficient money coming to cover, maybe just cover, uh, HPAT's operating expenses for the coming year. However, there are a number of reasons, and I think uh, many of them may have been detailed to the select board uh, in a message from the station manager. Um, but because of uh, some volatility in the world of cable television, uh, there is a good possibility that such funds may shrink in the future. So that even looking at the services HPAT provides the town now, um, we may be looking in coming years at less money to do that with and the potential of reduced services. Um, we also want to, to make sure that the uh, select board uh, is aware that uh, not only a number of members of our committee, but uh, well, a number of members of our committee are interested in seeing HPAC grow and be able to offer more to the town, offer more services. And it's not just a desire on the part of our committee members. Um, the town, as a prep preparation for going into the most recent uh, license negotiations with Charter, uh, conducted an ascertainment survey of uh, cable subscribers in Hadley. And in that ascertainment survey, one of the uh, pertinent facts that came out was that a good chunk of the town, more than one third of respondents to the survey, indicated that uh, HPAT should be providing more programming, or that there should be more programming produced by Hadley residents and there should be more programming of an educational nature and or relating to the schools, coming out of the schools. We wholeheartedly agree with those, uh, both of those, and would like to see that function happen, but that can take money, and so it's, there's additional, um, there's the potential for, for, for uh, to be able to do more, we may need more than the money that's coming from Charter, which may or may not remain at the level it's even at now, uh, are kind of our main points. Um, I think the, the one other main point. Uh, it was another point I was going to make. And I was saying, I just forgot what it was. But. So I'll just add. We don't want to go on too long here. It's not a lot of money, and it's uh, just age pat and all that. But. Uh, the process seems um, a little uh, brutal to let a department know secondhand that their entire uh, budget from the town side has been cut. So, so we would ask that that doesn't happen this year if it does if it does need to happen. We also think that Richard, for whatever he does well, whatever he could do better, he runs a frugal department. And the reason that there is money sitting there is because he doesn't spend unnecessarily. Um, in fact, we're talking about, you know, there's a 15-year-old character generator. There's a lot of needs down there that um, that money set aside for, and and uh, I don't think we should or the department should be punished for having been careful with their money and having uh, built reserves. Um, the question of it being private funds that's sitting there. You know, most of that money is passed through money, if not all of it. So that's not taxpayer money. That's subscriber money. That's people who write um, checks to charter every month. A small percentage of that check ends up back with the town. So the recent um, negotiation that the town administrator and the station manager managed with, with uh, Charter, I guess I would call it successful, um, counted on that money being there. So for a couple of months after, two, three months after a contract is negotiated to take away a piece of the funding that contract was built around, it seems, uh, what should I call it the opposite of good faith, whatever that would be. I'm just trying to say here that um, this work was done, assuming that money would be there. Um, amounts were decided on and agreed upon between the town and, and a, a big corporation. That all happened, I think, with the assumption that the uh, tax 
contribution would remain somewhat stable. So we'd ask you to consider that too. Uh, yeah. We'll survive one way or the other. I'd like to hope. Um, Sean says charter money should be expected to decline. That's true. Richard's done some background work in a general national agreement that towns should expect less from the um, cable TV companies. So we would ask you, I know no decision has been made, but for this year to please leave the 17 grand in, that's uh, $3 a year per resident or about a penny a day per resident to have this primary channel for education, for emergency response. Uh, it reaches about 4,000, almost 4,000 residents. So if there's a major weather event or any other message we'd like to get through, Charter's the easiest, fastest way to, uh, to do yeah, an HPAD. And so, just, yeah. okay, my talk is fine. I tend no, to talk to myself. Just the one other thing that I want to Wait, add. How, is so one last one second. Second. how would people know about Superintendent Klamaski's wild side with fashion if it wasn't for HPAD being here <laughs> to record it on video? So these are the important things. That, uh, sorry, Sean. Uh, just one thing I want to add, and that is you know, that the, the, the charter money, as, as mentioned, does come from the cable subscribers in town. And it would be easy to say, well, they're the only ones who benefit from it uh, because they're the only ones who can watch the channel. The fact is, though, that there are multiple ways in which what HPAT does benefits heavy residents who aren't cable subscribers, such as the meeting segments that get posted on the internet. Uh, anyone who's got an internet connection can watch those, whether that comes from charter or not. Uh, and the emergency response uh, uh, information that the town can use uh, is beneficial to everyone. Uh, right, Richard's been posting stuff on the web. Mm -hmm. So, so, I, so no. given the fact that cable, non-cable subscribers are benefited, we think that, uh, that, that certainly... And Mr. Chair, I'm saying, if other departments are getting hit just as hard as we are, um, that we should probably just work with you on this, but we're hoping we wouldn't be singled out like this. Well, you were singled out. Other people were cut down too and okay. rearranged. Um, but a lot before I, we start talking about whether we reconsider it, um, I do. I'm glad you came, and we are very interested. And we talked a little bit about trying to to get more out of HPAT, uh, and we're happy you are too. Um, we are going to go into sort of a long range strategic planning mode here next month. No. Yeah, next yeah, month, the 20th. Next month. We're going to kick it off. And yeah, we, would def yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we would definitely like to hear more of your ideas and figure out how, how to give more and get more out of the station. Um, I see what other people do with their stations, and I really I like it. Um, mm -hmm. it I, I would prefer you only show the select board meeting once, uh, not four million times. It, uh, it does. It makes me uh, can't watch it. <laughs> so. Uh, if you're out Gopher, you know what it can be like. Uh, Amherst, whatever it's called, ACTV in Amherst is phenomenal. We've got 25 volunteers working at any one week, and uh, they're a wonderful model. So front, Frontier TV, I guess they call it, or Deerfield TV. Um, that's a nice little setup. Um, but we are we, we welcome you to come and join us in that discussion. We're going to start on the 20th, and uh, you can jump in, send us stuff, and start talking about it, and um, we can go forward. Um, personally, I, I don't see this as being, yes, we're going to probably, well, my vote is to continue to use this money for this year. Um, at the end, in fall town meeting, we're going to make some adjustments in the budgets because we know we have to make some adjustments on some, some things. Um, if we decide to go back and put some more money back in, I don't have a problem myself personally recommending that and supporting it. Um, but right now, I'm going to stay with our plan for now. Um, but I do look forward to having this conversation where we can look at what we, how we can make it bigger, better, and provide more to the people. Um, and I, do, I agree with you too that uh, cable TV is on its way out. So go for it. Can I ask you? Can I add know. one other thing to that too? Um, the other takeaway here that I'm certainly hearing very clearly, and again, it's something that we know, and by all means, HPAD is not singled out in this regard. Uh, we clearly need to change our communication around strategic planning in the budget process. Um, to your point, um, is it disrespectful to cut somebody's budget without having conversation? Absolutely. And that, and that needs to stop, and you're not singled out in that regard. Um, yes, having 100% of the town funded line item, I mean, that, but it is $16,000, and there is $78,000 in the operating account. Um, and another 75,000 in the capital account. So I think that you can continue to make some improvements, you know, but understand that it's likely a one-year proposition and this whole engagement with you during the strategic planning process will really help flesh out the long-term prospects for HPAT and the role that the town's funding may need to play in that. I'm certainly open-minded to hearing that. 
So it comes down to the bottom line is you're, you're punishing HPAC, you're taking away funding from HPAC because of uh, spending that can't be met by revenues in other departments. So if mom and dad are spending too much money on their lifestyle, should they be hitting the kids' piggy, piggy bank so to pay for that lifestyle? Thank you for your comment. Do any of the select board members okay. want to make a comment? No. I don't dare. Okay. Um, I hope you. I mean, I hope you understand what we said and, and where we want to go, and we do understand your concerns. It's the same thing as the school department using school choice. They're using theirs for to offset their budget. We're having to do offset your budget with what you have now in your stabilization account. So, uh, just to get everybody through this at this point in time, then that's what we're. Uh, plan to do. We did vote the budget uh, at the start of this meeting and it's set in motion for next Thursday night. Well, that's good to hear. So school choice money is being used for purposes outside of the school? Yes. No, it's no, being it's used for school, school purposes. Ah. School and budget. HPAT money is being, being used, used for HPAT, HPAT purposes and not outside HPAT. So everyone at home understands that. We're not taking HPAT money and supporting the police department or the fire department. Oh, so where is the 17000 that you're taking away going? Right to you're your You're using budget. the money from your reserve account to cover your operation. That's the private, same, private the, money. The same, no, it's not it's private not money. It's not private. It belongs to the town. So, so I think we're done with this discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, we appreciate we're done with this discussion. Sorry. Thank you. I hope we do. Yeah. I just want a clarification. You are open to restoring some of the funding in the fall. With money yes, we are. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your time. Did you have any other questions for us? No, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we need to divide up the motions for annual town meeting. So the moderator will do the consent calendar and explain that. Oops. Or do we want one of us? No, it will be the moderator. The moderator will present the consent calendar. All right. And so we've all John will do the rest of them. John, yeah, they're not coming. Yeah, John. That's a long shower. Yeah. Revolving funds. <laughs> uh, task you've asked me to take care of that one. All right. Russell School Stabilization. Anybody want to? Oh, I'll do it. Okay. 2015 budget adjustments. What is the budget adjustment? What is that? We have snow and ice. Uh, we have police. Medicare. And Medicare. Have you? I thought you haven't done that in the past? Uh, no. Okay. I'll do that. The sewer on Laura Anna Drive. That's a good job. John. That's a John. John. <laughs> Oiler emergency. Uh, I'll do that one. Uh, hold on. Next one. Capital stabilization. You want to do that one? I can do those. I'll do. Uh, actually, yeah, we don't have. I'll do You're doing the two capitals? I'll do the two capitals. Okay, um, I'll use a solar pilot. I'll do that. Hopkins 350th, I'll do. Wait a minute, where are we? How about 17, 17 and 18? Partial service, 13. Municipal building. 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 Oh, yeah, here we are. Petitioners. Petitioners. Jerry, are you going to do the 350th too? Yes, correct. And police chief. Okay. And then the transfer development rates. I can do that one if you want. Okay. So that's all of our good tips. So now we need to sign the warrant. Because I can. There are a couple minor changes. We said we're going to tweak. Uh, some of the numbers from, uh, I think one of them is a $15,000 number in here, but the balance in the account is 14100 and something. The 350th? 
three, yeah, there was, there was another article that uh, we were moving money from something and we didn't quite have the balance that so said. If we, okay. if we go to Article 6, which is the Russell School, right now we have that listed at 106,000 and change. And uh, I, I need to spend some money out of that account in order to keep that building moving forward. So in the motion, I'll move that uh, 106 to 100 even. That's fine. And then in the 350th, which is Article 18, the balance isn't quite 15,000, so in the motion, we'll have the true amount, which will be 14 and change. And we'll just explain that. So, right. Yeah. Have the right numbers at the beginning too that night. Correct. The budget part. Yeah. Budget. Mm -hmm. So, anybody want to move it? Can we sign? Okay. The motion we sign the mm -hmm. annual town warrant for eight. No, May eight. Second. Yes. Any other Perfect. discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you, finance. Thanks Thank everybody. You. I hope everybody was watching. It took a lot to get the budget together this year. And, um, a lot of people working on it, so everybody should get all up they can. All right. So we're now down to new business. Um, Jack Gonzalez and Sons change order number one, Laura Anna Lane. Mr. Kamaski. Yes, <coughs> there's a change order from uh, Tie and Bond for Lorana Lane. That involves the trench patch that was there for the work that they did. Replacing that sewer line, the uh, engineer looked at the trench patch. I looked at it with the town administrator, and we felt it would be better to overlay the whole road in that area that was dug up where they replaced the sewer. So they gave us a figure of $5,600 to pave that area of roadway that was dug up, per se, to replace that sewer line. Included in that $5,600, there's raising of the uh, drain structures, milling of the driveway, aprons, <coughs> tack coat prior to paving, and they are installing two inches of uh, blacktop over 1,000 feet, 25 feet wide to the uh, termination of the trench within North Maple Street and Hobbles to uh, Kent Hill Drive. So that's the bulk of the $5,600. They're minusing it from what they would have had to use to permanently dig that out and permanently pay the trench again because it was just a temporary tax for the winter. Is it me or does that sound like a very modest price for that? Uh, it does and it doesn't because the trench patch, they figured a large amount of money to do that because of the compaction that they have to do in the trenches. They had $39,000. But the quality of the road will be 10 times. 10 times. Okay. It's pretty horrific right now. It is. <laughs> Make a motion we authorize. I'll second. All those in, are you in the discussion? Where's that money coming from? That money will come from the... Uh, Emergency appropriation of $275,000 for uh, that we uh, that we got from well, the what state. Uh, if the article at the town meeting passes, it'll come out of sewer. Right no, now, it's right well, now it should it's an be incorrect off. because you're doing an overlay, and the rest should come out of the overlay. The difference should come out of Chapter 90 funding, not all of the sewer. The sewer didn't cause all that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nobody heard that, I guess, huh? Um, Mr. Item mm -hmm. number two, W.M. Schultz, request for payment number nine. <coughs> the, this is a requisition number nine for $38,000 for the sewer pump stations one and four project. Uh, the bulk of the payment would be for interior painting and for the beginning of the electrical work that needs to happen on that uh, project. We had a uh, project meeting yesterday. That project is moving forward. Uh, we're tight on time. We had an extension of time as a change order uh, a while ago, and it may be the case of we'll have to come back 
and ask for additional time. However, the project is moving forward and uh, seems to be progressing well. Make a motion to for payment number nine. Okay, is there a second? Second. Is there questions? Yeah, um, were there provisions in the contract uh, outlining time frames? Yes. And why are they not? Okay, we've had weather. Is it the weather issue that it's not being met? There are and are there penalties if it doesn't get done in the suit for time? Uh, yes and yes and yes. Uh, so there were weather issues that delayed uh, the completion of the project after the factory delays that Gorman run was it? Yes. Okay. The pumps, uh, the pumps uh, were not delivered by the factory uh, in the time schedule that we had originally um, uh, entertained. So we. We knew that we had a delay because of the factory uh, delivery uh, delay, and we also knew that we were running into a su more severe weather than we had anticipated. So we had a change order to push the completion date back till the end of June. <coughs> uh, with the electrical work that needs to happen, maybe we can get that done by the deadline. Maybe we can't. We'll, we'll have a better sense uh, later on. Uh, the <coughs> penalties are the standard liquidated damages of a thousand dollars a day. So at this point in time, what's the estimated completion date? Right now, substan uh, substantial completion May 30th. Yes. Okay. And final completion June 30th. Okay. I just wanted to state that <coughs> I've been getting some calls from some of the neighbors around there trying to find out when this is project's going to be completed. It's a mess on some of those sites. Is there any way we can get these sites a little bit more tidy? This is a... Uh, the people who live at uh, 201 Middle Street are going to be holding a graduation party on May 9th. We've been <coughs> in contact with them and with the contractors to talk about how we can tidy up that that property and make it more presentable for the guests that will be there. I've told the people, unfortunately, they're not going to get a whole loaf of bread. They're going to get half a loaf. The bales that uh, control the uh, uh, erosion control uh, will going to have to remain there. Uh, and uh, but they were they were happy with that. Okay. Uh, with respect to pump station number four, I haven't heard anything directly. Have you? No, I have not. Okay. But there's a lot of so they're going to start trying to clean up they all are, the junk. We mentioned that at our meeting yesterday. Good. Yeah, that's Unsightly. Mr. Did the town ever get a credit for pump station number four to slab they didn't put in? And if so, how much did they get this credit? The last, I'm oh, sorry, no, go ahead. That's all yours. The, the, the last we, we heard that we have uh, asked about the credit, we haven't heard that we've gotten the credit. Right. Um, okay. So we need to give me all the time. Sure. We get sure. They're asking for a change order and extra money, and yet you asked them about the credit for something they didn't do that was in a contract, and that doesn't matter? The change orders for Lorena. Lorena. No. no, but I mean for this job over here. Change orders for the time of completion and final payment. It's a timing, not just a, timing. Just time. not a monitor. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we have last two. Well, we have a couple more things. So Claire Carlson, Carlson the library trustee, she's resigning. Mm -hmm. So we need to schedule the joint meeting with the library trustees to appoint an interim. To so appoint what? An interim. Okay. Substantially, this has been done, correct? There was a person who did not yeah. receive, or who was a second, second and that would be the person that would, I, I would tentatively think that we could tonight approve upon the recommendation of the library trustees. We have to have a we joint have meeting to do this. Yeah, there's, there's a process by law that we have to have a joint meeting with a week's notice. Okay. So, so <clears throat> the 7th? Mm -hmm. I'll try for the 7th. We do it the 7th? Excellent. And we're meeting at 6? Mm -hmm. So well, keep blowing that up there. Well, we can we'll actually do it. Minutes. We could do it at seven. Well, seven we're meeting with the library anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. We can meet at six fifty before time meeting starts and do it for everybody. Right. But why don't we just schedule it for the Sabbath at six, and we'll go from there. I'd also like to thank uh, Claire Carlson for her years of service, um, serving as a library trustee. Mm -hmm.
Send a letter. Send a letter. She was also a historic official. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so next we have a common event. Okay. Permit renewal for Wendy's. Yep, so there's still a couple places I'm going after. Um, Wendy's finally sent theirs and it took a little while. There's been a lot of confusion this year <sighs> with the Board of Health permitting and the Common Vic. A lot of the um, different establishments felt that they already paid it. So um, next year we're going to try to maybe send them together or something so they would know they're two different fees. But a lot of times they think that they've paid for this when it's the Board of Health permit. Okay. So they pay everything and everything is everything we good. Okay. Motion accept. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so last thing I need to do is get approval of warrants 24B, 28B, 46, and 46S. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So are there any announcements? Tell me. May 7th. Don't let everybody forget that we have the town meeting on May 7th. Uh, please join us. Brian's. Uh, so go easy on the new town Brian's meeting. Brian's maiden voyage. Yeah. Uh, we have two condolences this evening. One to the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And also to the family of uh, Francis Bugsy Duda. Um, we send our condolences. All right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.